welcome to my uh, humble <laughs> humble podcast. Thank you for your time to record with me um, tonight. All right. So how are you, Jess? How, how have you been since the camp? I'm good. Yeah, it's always nice to be home with family and friends and seeing them. We've been traveling like crazy with the national team. And then before that, when I was on a club. So it's just good to be home. And first question for me really would be how and when did you learn about the national team and what made you decide to commit to playing for the national team? I think it was um, maybe I started when I was 14. I think um, at the time, uh, the recruiter liaison, Mark, he would show up like a college recruiter at like the club soccer games. And um, he reached out to my club coach at the time and asked um, if I'd be interested in, you know, playing for the Philippines. And also at the time, I think I was playing with uh, the U.S. um, youth national team. So I was kind of doing both. But uh, I think for me, I stuck with the Philippines since I was 14 all the way up till I capped at 18 years old. So um, it's been a long journey, I'd say. Um, And kind of weird because I didn't even visit the Philippines until I was 18 and I went to the Asian Cup uh, there in Jordan. So um, all the camps were here in California, which is really nice. But um, it was also nice to visit the Philippines for the first time on my first cap, so. Talk to me about your relationship with your with your teammates and how easy was it to transition and be with the team during camps? Yeah, so for a lot of us, I think we've um, stayed close throughout, like, especially like Chandler and the McDaniels, like we've been together even before national team. So to come together for national team, I think that transition was easy. And then For our team, I think there's a lot of people coming in and a lot of people coming out, but um, it's never, I don't think it's ever been an issue in terms of chemistry or people getting along on or off the field. I think that's a unique thing about our team, Um, despite people coming in and coming out. um, We've never had a problem with people not getting along and um, bonding on the team. So I think it's really good for us to continue that, um, especially on our way to the World Cup, which is the biggest stage in women's soccer so um, it's been really nice to grow relationships with the new girls that have come in and then also um, grow on the relationships that I've had since the youth camps and up until now. Right so you you played in Denmark and uh, also explored other clubs in Europe then Cyprus how was that experience like for you trying to get your foot in the door and generally playing in Europe and will you be playing for another club soon? Yeah, I think after college, um, the goal was always to play overseas, but COVID happened and that was just a whole thing within itself. So it was really difficult to reach out to teams and teams wanting to sign foreign players. And obviously it was new to me, so I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I had to get an agent and the whole agent conversation is a whole nother thing in itself. So um, that was a difficult thing for me as well. But luckily I was able to find a club for Denmark, even though it was only like the second half of the season. But um, it was definitely a interesting first experience for myself. Um, It definitely made me grow as a person and a a player. Um, I wasn't used to not playing as much as I was in college or club. But I just work, kept working and then, um, you know, thankfully found another club in Cyprus and there I was able to play a little bit more. So definitely different styles of play as well. Um, so it's always interesting to experience that and make you grow as a player. Right, right. Any, any um, uh, clubs you'll be playing for soon? Uh, I hope. I I think it's always a a conversation that we have with our coaches as well. They're like, why don't you just get on an NWSL team? And if it was that easy, I definitely just call up Natalie Portman and ask her, hey, can I join? But um, it's definitely not as easy as it seems. Um, I'm constantly like reaching out to different agents um, and teams on my own as much as I can. Um, but some things are definitely out of my control and I just hope and pray that, um, 
I'll be able to find a club and hopefully a bigger club than the past clubs that I've been on just to help me evolve as a player and get me ready for um, if I make the World Cup roster. Right, right. So is there um, anything you're currently uh, working on to improve your game or how you play in preparation for the upcoming friendlies in the World Cup? I think for me, um, fitness has always been a, a big thing. I think on the ball, I can always improve. Um, that's just little things. But in terms of off the ball, like being able to have a full tank for a full 90 minutes or plus, that's always been a big thing for me. So just continuing to keep up with my fitness, doing extra when I can and uh, making sure that, yeah, I can. I have nothing left in the tank after a game um, because I gave it my all during that game. So just fitness, I think I've been working on the most during this off um, off season, off break. Gotcha, gotcha. And what's your most memorable experience playing for the Philippines so far? Oh, that's a lot. There's a lot of experiences. Um, all right, we want to hear it. <laughs> uh, most memorable. Um, I think, honestly, during AFF, um, no, not AFF, SEA Games. SEA Games when we played um, for the bronze medal match. I think that was something like I've never experienced before. Obviously, playing for a medal was something um, big for our our team. But um, we also like came back and won that game and um, just showed a lot of character and um, hard work. So. That was an experience. And then the fans in Vietnam were amazing. Um, we weren't even their, their host country, but they were like, so nice to us and they were cheering us on and playing in front of, I don't even know how many people, maybe like 16,000 or more, but um, the crowd and them not being your country and being having the best hospitality was also a great experience for us. So um, I think that that would be the most memorable so far for me. The, bronze medal match yeah gotcha okay so we'll go through the social media questions now so first one would be an easy one from <laughs> from claro in and out <laughs> chick-fil-a and your go-to meal go to meal there in the u.s after a full 90 minutes right um if my coaches are watching this is just a fan question I don't really mean this but um uh in it I'd say in and out over Chick-fil-A just because it's oh like I never not crave in and out I'd say a burger always hits the spot a shake again I don't eat this but if I did I would choose that as my meal some animal style fries um but maybe after the game um I'm a huge pizza gal so I love pizza Hawaiian Pizza is the best pizza, so um, Hawaiian pizza after a game would definitely be my go-to meal. All right. Disclaimer: This is my <laughs> hearing, watching this. I don't, I don't <laughs> salads and healthy foods only for me. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, from Vincent Perez, uh, can you talk about your other co-midfielders, such as? Sarah, Jackie, and or Kaya, what's it like being playing beside them in the midfield? And how's the competition like in the central mid position in the starting uh, 11? Yeah, uh, I think all of our midfielders that we have on the team, there's, there's so many of us. Um, and so many of us that play can play in that role next to me or play in front of me. Um, so I think especially like Riley too in the mix, um, we've been playing next to each other since um, Asian cup, I think, and then, and forward. So but I think all of the midfielders that we have on our team bring a lot of different characteristics and personalities. So, um, like I said, Riley, who I've played with since Asian cup, um, we grew a strong connection in the midfield. I think we learned each other's ways. I'm a little bit more going forward. She's a little bit more back. We still cover each other kind of thing, but obviously the new players like Jackie, um, who's, you know, great on the ball, very calm um it's good to play with someone very technical like her and especially sarah and kaya as well um 
uh, sometimes T. I think I played again with T before too as well. But right. Right. Um, everyone that can play in that position is good at that position. They again they bring different things to the table, and it helps me grow as a player, and it helps the team grow as well. So I think that's been beneficial for us to throw different combinations in the middle and different people together. Um, his second, his second question um, is your thoughts on the. 80-90th minute in the final when the fans started to turn on their phone lights. Oh, yeah. I think I was, like, warming up on the side. But when I saw that, I, I was, like, kind of confused as to what was going on. Um, and we were all, like, uh, looking around. And it was, like, such a surreal moment, I think, because we all saw the clock obviously winding down. And we knew – we kind of knew to ourselves that the game was over. But obviously, we didn't want to say that. But – um to have the crowd like kind of engaged and we always say this like within our team and I think we've said this to the public as well that the crowd is literally our 12th man out there so without them um, I don't think we would have been able to push through some certain moments um, to win the game and I think the whole light that they did at the end was a beautiful moment for us in the country so something we all probably will never forget so yeah, that, that was that was surreal. <laughs> um, question from Camille Naredo. Can you ask Jessica McClatt about her chemistry with her fellow midfielders? If you want to elaborate more on what you mentioned earlier. Yeah, so I think, um, honestly, I think all of them have different heights, builds, um, styles of play and characteristics. Like I said, Riley, Riley's a, a ball winner. She's super solid. Um, I can trust that if I'm forward and Riley's behind me, that she'll 10 times out of 10 win the ball and um, try to find us. So I love playing with Riley alongside Riley. I've been playing with her for a while. Um, with Jackie, she's a very technical player, very calm. You know, she she works hard. She's super fit. And, um, you know, that's what you want in a midfielder. And then Sarah as well. Um, I think this being her first big tournament, she did a great job. and. Um, stepped up to the plate in moments that she needed to and Kaya as well <laughs> I played it against Kaya in college so I know what kind of player she is to play against and I'm just glad I don't have to play against her anymore and I get to play next to her so that's good and like I said any other midfielders that they throw <laughs> in the mix I I'm not worried about anything so I think that's good to have a solid good group of midfielders on a national team Gotcha. All right. From Bolivs Bolivar. Um, okay. So in my recording with Jackie, actually, she identified you as the best dribbler in the national team. Who do you try to emulate as a dribbler or when you dribble? Uh, I don't, I, I don't want to say messy because, you know, that's like the, everyone says messy. Um, but uh, I'm not as crazy as Ronaldinho, but I do try to like be like kind of his style. He he was the type of player that just took players on, like didn't really not that he didn't care, but like he had so much confidence that like he could he could beat this player and then the next player. Um, I don't know if I'll be doing rainbow flicks and nutmegs every five seconds, but um I definitely try to take people on as much as I can when I can, but um, in the position I'm in now as a, a little bit back mid instead of a forward mid, I kind of have to pick my moments when I can do that. So, Yeah, Jackie mentioned how crafty you are and that she's having a hard time uh, defending against you one on one. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I think the only time we can really like go at each other because we play in the same position is during practice. And, you know, um, when we play like 4v4 and stuff like that, um, it's definitely very competitive. But I think we all love, love practice when we do drills like that because we get to showcase our talents and what we can do on the ball and off the ball. So it's always fun. And Bolivs, uh, other question would be uh, toughest games as a uh, toughest games. Um, I think our our game against um, 
a recent most recently i think our game against indonesia for some reason you know it happens on teams like you start off kind of flat and even though going into it you may be the better team it's not always that doesn't always work out so i think for that game specifically um we kind of came out super flat so it was hard to come out of that but thankfully you know we had uh, great subs come in and make an impact and we were able to kind of get out of that but um I think I'd say that game and then our game against Australia in the Asian Cup. Um, first half was uh, just a running match, I think, um, for us, but we held our ground. We tied at halftime and then second half it was a little tougher. I think Australia came in and kind of started connecting the dots a little bit more, but it was it was a hard match for us, but I think it was something we needed to experience because they're one of the best countries in the world and we're only going to play better teams like that in the World Cup, whoever we get in our draw. So um, it was definitely a hard match, but uh, good in the sense that it helped us grow too as a team. Yeah, that Indonesia game was tough. First half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, from Don Don Malaga. How's, I don't know if you want to answer this, but how strict is Coach Allen? Is he a terror coach? What um what changes did you uh what changes um did he make in the team compared to the previous coaches and do you feel any pressure playing under coach Taj? I don't think he's super strict. Um to be honest, Coach Allen doesn't really say much. Um like he's not an extreme yeller like I've experienced some other coaches have been in my experience playing soccer, but when he does pull you aside or has something to tell you, you really have to like take it in. Cause again, he doesn't say that much, but um, uh, I don't think he's super strict. If people think that he's not that strict, but um, he definitely cares. So like I said, when he ha actually talks to you, take it in and know that what he's saying is super important. Um, well, the other question was, um, the other question is if you feel any pressure playing under Coach right. Allen. Yeah. Um, something that we've talked about, I think, on our team is there like there's no such thing as pressure kind of thing. Um, Coach Allen emphasizes to us like when we go into a big game, like to not feel pressure. Like pressure is trying to figure out what to or find food for your family or something like that. Um, that's pressure. But um being able to play in front of fans for your home country and playing the sport that you love that's not pressure pressure is a privilege obviously so um to play under him you know he's done great things in the past before he came to our team and we've been very successful since him and the staff have been here so um it's been nice to play under him and um i think there's so much more potential that this team has um and Hopefully, it when he puts the people in the right places that we only go up from here. So excited about that. Right. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I mean, that's a good perspective. So that, that kind of changes my mindset as well now about pressure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. From Haruyuki Escarda. During the AFF, we saw you dancing, celebrating with Olivia. When and where did that come from? Or what is the story behind that celebration? Yeah, there's really no story. I think me and Olivia, we're just always vibing together. Um, we've known each other for so long, so we're super close. And we've been roommates for the past tournaments. So it's definitely been fun during the campaigns um, with her. And I think anytime we, like, see each other, we kind of have, like, telepathy and, like, just auto it's just automatic um, when we start dancing. But uh, uh, we have a lot of other moves, so maybe next tournament next camps you guys will see different moves from us but i think the the shoulder one is our iconic one i think that's the one that the people love to see and we've been seeing a lot of so we'll keep it going <laughs> <laughs> all right from sunbeam um he has three questions but i think you've answered the first one um what are your hobbies i think other than soccer hobbies um my teammates may not believe me and um, may find this hard to believe, but I do read. 
they don't think that I do, but I do read a lot. Um, I think in our Australian camp, I had, uh, we went to the bookstore and I bought a book and everyone thought I just bought it just for fun. But I actually read the book and it was The Art of War. Um, interesting oh, that's nice. Book. Yeah, interesting book for sure. It was definitely a lot to, I had to underline some things, circle some things, but um, I finished it and then um, tried to pass it around to everyone else so that I can share the knowledge. But uh, I do like to read when I can. Um, I like to play with my dog, Gumbo. He's a German Shepherd. Um, so when I'm home, I'm not home that often, but when I am, I like to play with him. We like to go on walks to the park, so that's nice. And then um, I'm very close with my family, so anytime that I get, I'm usually hanging with them. Um, if it's at home or just watching TV or a movie or sometimes me and my brother will go out. Um, we're big foodies, so we like to try out different food spots and things like that. So I'd say those are my hobbies, eating. If that's a hobby, that's, that's me. So. <laughs> wow. I wish. I wish I was <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So this is a very personal question. Um, this is from Sunbeam, but this is a common question from a lot of, um, I, I received a lot of this uh, same question from other people also. Um, let mm -hmm. me know if you want to answer it or not. <laughs> um, on behalf of my guy friends, avid fans of yours, and practically everyone, we want to know if you're single or taken. <laughs> I, I am single. Yes. Um, I've had this mindset since college. Whenever like my college coaches asked as well, it's always been like at the time it was always school and soccer and I'm not no longer in school. So right now it's just soccer, but I am single. No no merit no married ring or anything like that right now i know sophia just got engaged so congrats to sophia my girl um but me i'm i'm just just vibing just enjoying life so all right thank you yeah. <laughs> that uh will quiet everyone down now um yeah. <laughs> from rd rivera bedro um of course favorite filipino food a um, menudo is my favorite Filipino oh. food. Yeah. yeah. And do you or would you play other positions? Um, definitely not forward. I did that in college and that was just not for me. Um, I think I played wing when I first um, started with the team. I was a, a winger. And I think that position was fine. Again, it's like, I just naturally gravitate towards the middle. So if I ever get pushed out wide, it's it's a little hard for me to just stay out wide, but I can definitely play that position and probably outside back as well. Um, I, I don't mind defending. So um, being a winger and going up and back, it's just a lot of running and yeah, running is so fun. But um, yeah, I think those positions, I was my college team's third string goalkeeper. so. In case we ever need a goalie, I know we have three already. Um, I can be the fourth string goalie for our team. Wow. A, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> Question from CJ. Uh, number nine is typically a number for a striker, and it's noticeably uncommon for a midfielder like you to wear number nine. What is the story behind wearing jersey number nine? <laughs> um, there really is no story. Um, I was 21 when I first started, and then um, I was going to be number 10 um, after when we came back, like for the Uzbekistan tournament, because that had been my number in college. And everyone was kind of asking around, like, oh, do you want this number, that number? And they had put me down for 10, but in our Uzbekistan camp, the sizing for the jersey numbers were different. So I kind of just grabbed the first jersey that I could in my size before they all came out. Um, and number nine just happened to be that number. And I think I'll just stick with that because I've made a lot of memories with that number. So that's the story behind that. Um, sorry, it's not I'm not a striker with that number, but um, maybe I'll be a good midfielder in number nine. So we'll see. <laughs> 
uh JD Ripper, I'm not sure what his name is. Sorry, Jeremy Canlas uh Duvan is his name. Um the question is in Tagalog, um, but I'll just uh, translate it for you. Um where is your dad from? And, um, maybe from, in the Philippines. Yeah, he's from Manila, but um Sao Paulo to be specific. But um yeah, he's from I is that a province within um I tried to I tried to ask him about it and I think he's confused about it as well. I don't know. But uh, he said Tampalo, which is Manila, obviously. Yeah, so, it's Manila. Um, yeah. It's it's near yeah. Rizal, actually. So Yeah. Oh yeah. really? Yeah. Oh nice. And um his second question is who's your favorite player, men or women, and what's your favorite club, whether EPL, Bundesliga, La Liga, or Serie A? Favorite player um, has always been Arjun Robin um, when he played for like Bayern Munich. I've always liked him as a player. Um, so he's always been one of my favorite players for sure. And favorite club I'd say would be Chelsea. My brother's a huge Chelsea fan. So he kind of brought me in the mix with that. And um, uh, he's, he was a big Eden Hazard fan. That's why he was a Chelsea fan, but I've kind of grown into liking Chelsea as well. So I'd say that's my favorite club. Gotcha. And last question would be from Jack Seven. Uh, sorry, put gallery mode. Okay. Um, she says you've been, you've always been in the starting lineup um, this year from the, from AFC till the AFF. How did you feel or what was going through your mind when you didn't start in the AFF crucial games like the semis for Vietnam and the finals versus Thailand. Yeah, I think um, it's always hard to go from, you know, starting majority of the games and playing significant minutes to not and having to sit on the bench and and all you want to do is kind of help your team. But we all have a role on the team. And during those games, my role was to support my team as best as I could and just know that when I do step on the field that I give it my all and I make as big of an impact as I can. So uh, I think it's just, that's the constant battle that um, a lot of players have, especially myself that um, selfishly you want, you think that you should be on the field all the time, every minute, but sometimes, you know, the coaches see something that you may not see and um, you just have to trust that and trust in your teammates that they can get the job done as well. And like I said, um, I just have to make sure that I play the role that I'm supposed to. And during those times, it was to cheer on my teammates and um, be ready to play when I would go in. So, All right. Thank you. And this question is from me. I always ask this during uh, the pod for every um, player that I have on. Uh, which team do you wish to play or not play against in the World Cup? Ooh. Um, I don't think there's a team that I wouldn't want to play. Um, I'm, I'm just super excited for the draw, um, and to see who we get, I'd say I'd really want to play the U S I think what better team to play than the number one team in the world. It's definitely going to be a very, very hard match. They're super talented and we've never played a team like that. I think so far. Um, but I think it'd be so great to be exposed to playing against players like them and um, seeing how our team matches up and whatever the result may be, I think we, we can only improve after playing teams like that. U S Germany, Sweden, teams like that. I I'd, I'd love to play against. They have so many um, talented players, their style of play is um, different. So uh, yeah, I definitely want to play against those countries, but, I'm definitely not afraid to play against um, any country either. So just excited. Love it. Love the spirit and the attitude. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and <laughs> last, uh, lastly, just uh, your message to stakeholders of Philippine women's football or Philippine football in, in general. Yeah, no, just think, uh, honestly, we can't, I can't say it enough. I think the team also um, just, Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Um, support has only been growing. I think our first game, there was um, maybe 
two, maybe 200. I don't, I don't really know. I know it was not as much as we were anticipating when we first had our first game on home soil, but um, we saw it. Um, you can see it on TV also, like the fans only came out to support throughout. So, and even streaming, I don't even know that I'm sure the numbers were high streaming as well, but um, just thank you for the support, not just for Philippine women's national team, but women's sports in general. I think it, it's only going up from here and growing even more. And we just need constant support and um, love, which you guys are giving us. And we truly appreciate that. And to those um, that make the TikToks that I that they tag me in, thank you as well. Shout out to them. They make me feel good because you guys like <laughs> to make videos of us and they're fun to watch. But um, yeah, just to thank you. And we love you guys and can't wait to keep making you guys proud. Thank you. Thank you, Jess. Thank you so, thank you. so much. Bye. Bye. Have Bye. a good day. Good night. Bye.